Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on the power of policy control. Thank you very much for joining. My name is Jamie Boys, and I'm a product marketing manager at Amdocs, working in the data experience business unit. This was the former Bridgewater Systems, and uh, I'm primarily focusing on, uh, uh, on policy control. Uh, if you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to type them in the Q&A window, and I will try to respond to these uh, at the end during the Q&A session. So let's get started. Uh, in terms of the agenda, I'm going to start by giving you a brief introduction to Amdocs and uh, sort of what we're doing in the area of policy. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about operator requirements for policy, how we're seeing those in the market, uh, what the different uh, requirements are in terms of you know, managing network capacity, uh, uh, enabling new services and those sorts of things. Then we'll look at uh, the evolution of policy and how policy has evolved and continues to evolve to, uh, to meet these operator requirements. And finally, we'll, uh, we'll wrap up with uh, a bit of a discussion on some of the key use cases for data monetization. We'll look uh, a little more in depth at a couple of examples uh, on how uh, service providers uh, can use policy to, um, uh, to, to monetize their data services. And, and as I mentioned before, we'll wrap up with a, uh, with a Q&A. So we'll start by just giving you a bit of an introduction to who Amdocs is. Amdocs is a leader in customer experience systems and services. Um, we, uh, we have revenues uh, in, the, in the order of uh, $3.2 billion in, uh, in 2011. Uh, a very strong cash, cash position as well, as you can see. And uh, so this allows us to apply these resources to continue to invest in our, in our customers' success. Amdocs has been around for... 30 years, uh, celebrating the 30th anniversary this year, and uh, we're currently employing uh, 19,000 uh, staff globally. Uh, this is serving customers in more than uh, 60 countries. And, uh, and we like to say that we're supporting 2 billion customer experiences a day. So that's Amdocs as a whole. Uh, let's take a look at uh, where Bridgewater and where the data experience business unit fits into, uh, fits into the picture. So Amdocs acquired Bridgewater Systems in uh, August of 2011. Um, Bridgewater was an expert in uh, uh, the network control plane. Uh, we had a strong multi-vendor pedigree, so we uh, had strong interoperability with all the different um, network vendors, including the, uh, the independent vendors, the network equipment providers, and we had a strong uh, history of providing standards-based support. So this is obviously relevant in the, in the area of policy control uh, in terms of supporting standards like the, uh, the 3GPP and so on. Um, and Amdocs obviously is a, a leading IT vendor with, with uh, you know, a great deal of experience in BSS and OSS. And uh, the, the acquisition of Bridgewater really brought together Bridgewater's policy solutions and Amdocs's charging technology. And you know, we'll talk uh, in more detail about about this and, and the benefits of this to service providers, but um, this really allows um, allows us to bring integrated policy and charging to the table uh, and and provide unique customer value. And when we get to the, some of the use cases that we're going to talk about, uh, we'll we'll go into more depth and in, uh, go into more depth in terms of how those uh, those components work together uh, to accomplish these goals. So in terms of the challenge for service providers, I think this is a fairly familiar chart to folks in terms of the, um, uh, in terms of the graph shown here, but um, a key challenge for operators is, uh, is how to deal with enormous network growth that they're seeing, enormous growth in data usage, uh, and the cost that goes along with that. So the, the cost to build out network resources um, and to, to support that uh, that continued growth, especially in the mobile network, uh, is, is a real challenge. So as costs escalate, then, then operators really need to figure out a way to make that revenue grow uh, uh, to, to, to support uh, the, the, the increasing costs that they're seeing. Um, so they need to build up capacity to accommodate the growing load on the network, and uh, you know the challenge really is figuring out how to monetize services in the network, how to, how to get more money out of their customers, um, how to increase average revenue per user, and so on, and and really uh, make 
that uh, growth in mobile data commensurate with uh, with revenue that's coming into the uh, into the operator. So that's one key challenge. Uh, the next slide shows a, an extremely complex uh, scenario, um, and and this is another key challenge that operators are dealing with is just the, the growing complexity uh, in the network across the fixed network and the mobile network. Um, and, and you can see in this rather complex example, today's users have many uh, connected devices, again, whether that's connected through the, uh, the fixed network or the mobile network. Uh, we have mobile devices such as smartphones. We have tablets that, that can be connected through Wi-Fi, uh, personal computers that are both connected uh, um, to the mobile network and the fixed network. All sorts of applications come into the mix as well. Um, and and you, you can also see that a user has multiple contexts where he uses uh, these different applications and devices. So this could be uh, remotely, while on the road, it could be at work, uh, it could be at home. Um, and, and you know these, these things are, are used for obviously very different reasons, including uh, entertainment, um, you know, music, movies, and so on. Uh, productivity, so if we look in the work context, how do we use these applications to, uh, to improve our productivity? Uh, there's safety issues in terms of uh, uh, driving safety and so on, uh, basic communication, social networking, all sorts of things. So there's a, there's a growing list of applications, and, and along with that comes enormous complexity, not only for the user, uh, but for the service provider as well. And, and I think the, the one trend that we're seeing here is, is this picture is not all that uncommon for um, an average or a mainstream user uh, of, uh, of the network, whereas before I think we would, we would consider this to be a, you know, a very tech-savvy user. But now this is, this is fairly common and, uh, and mainstream for a user to have this kind of complex arrangement in terms of devices, applications, uh, different user contexts, and so on. So all in all, it's, uh, it's quite obviously a very complicated environment. So let's take a, a look at policy kind of at an introductory level um, and, and talk a little bit about how policy comes into play in this scenario to, to help operators um, address some of these challenges. Uh, in this example, we've got, uh, we've got a user um, and there's a policy rule here defined. And, and at the most basic level, a policy is a rule that has specific conditions and actions attached to it uh, when those conditions are met. So in this policy rule example, we have a subscriber, Maria, uh, who's accessing a video on YouTube. And we know that Maria has a basic data plan that has, uh, let's say, a, a default connection speed of, of 512 kilobits per second. So we're able to, um, to determine what Maria's entitlements are, and we see that with this basic plan, she has a specific quality of service. Um, and so what this policy rule can do is if if we realize that Maria is on that lower tier plan, then we can prompt Maria with a one-time turbo boost uh, to give her a higher quality of service, boost her up to a megabit per second, let's say, uh, so that she can have an improved data experience. So this example really shows that a policy is subscriber aware. We're aware of what, first of all, what Maria is doing in the network, and second of all, what, um, uh, what her specific entitlements are, what she's entitled to do in the network. And it's also network aware, so uh, we could add conditions to this policy to show, uh, to determine what's going on in the network. Is there congestion in the network? Is there congestion in the, uh, in the core network, the radio access network? And we, we can attach conditions to this policy rule and, uh, and, and, and attach actions uh, that, would, that would result if those conditions were met. And uh, so it's network aware and it's also IT aware. So uh, when we talk about IT aware, we mean um, we're aware of, of, of what Maria's uh, context is in the network, but we're also aware of what the charging logic uh, and, and uh, the billing and so on is associated with, um, with her plan and with her activities in the network. So what this adds up to for the operator is a revenue advantage, the ability to, to generate revenue in real time. I mean, real time is a key here in terms of um, uh, the benefit of policy in this context. And, and we can provide much more innovative services. So that, that's, that's policy in a nutshell. Um, let's look at a little bit about where we are in terms of the market and uh, what service providers are doing in policy today. So 
Um, this graph shows uh, some research that was done by Heavy Reading asking, uh, uh, asking service providers in North America, Europe, and Asia Pacific um, what policy, you know, do they have policy elements in their network today? And I believe this was from uh, early, early 2012. And you can see from the, uh, the response here that overwhelmingly, yes, uh, service providers do have some policy elements in, uh, in the network. So you can see across the different regions, we range from 89% saying yes up to 92% uh, in, uh, in Europe. And, and, and relatively small percentage who are saying that no, they do not. So uh, very common. Um, what I would say about, about where we are today is that most of these policy solutions are focused on network use cases. So operators are concerned about that, uh, that graph that's, that's going upward in terms of network costs, and they're looking at policy uh, to do things like implement fair usage controls or bandwidth management controls. And I think um, a lot of this was done uh, in, in the first instance as part of mobile packet core deployments, uh, you know, in terms of network equipment providers uh, giving some basic policy capabilities as part of their overall end-to-end -end solution, uh, and and uh, you know, policy is is really recognized as a as a necessity, um, not something that uh, that operators can do without. But but the point here is that in this, you know, the large percentage of these uh, installations, policy is really focused on bandwidth management and control, and less so on service innovation, service enablement, and, and monetization. So with this in mind, let's look at how policy has evolved and how it continues to evolve. So uh, on the left here, we've got first generation policy. The setting was typically fixed networks, uh, and there were often static rules that were put in place to limit certain types of activities, such as peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. Uh, that would be a big one. If we look back at uh, um, you know the, the the concept of you know 10 or 20 percent of the users using 80 percent of the the resources in the network, I think this is you know one of the primary drivers for uh, this initial level of policy deployment, um, peer to peer being being the biggest uh, the biggest challenge that operators were seeing at the time. And then I think we're we're probably somewhere around second, you know, somewhere between second generation and third generation, as it's as it's shown in this picture. Um, in second generation policy, again, mostly focused on network protection in mobile networks. Uh, so we have the uh, the enormous uh, increase in in data usage over the last several years, uh, and as operators have have deployed their their mobile packet core. Uh, they're also deploying policy, but this is typically uh, bandwidth management focus using a single enforcement point in the network, so typically the, uh, uh, the access gateway, uh, the GGSN, uh, or the equivalent in, in other access networks. And, and I think, um, you know, it's limited deployment and, and limited use cases supported by the policy, by the policy uh, installation. Um, where we're getting towards, and what I'm going to talk to you about today in terms of monetization is, is really using policy to enable new services specifically for data monetization. And uh, the key here is that policy is application aware, IT aware, and subscriber aware, also network aware. Uh, so we've added that component where we've got to tie in with um, online charging so that we can connect what's going on in the network with, um, with the charging logic uh, on, the, on the online charging side. So we have the ability to uh, provide a lot more innovation and capabilities in the, in the network for the operators to support these different types of services. And they're really looking at policy as a way to differentiate their services, give their customers uh, uh, maximum choice uh, and the ability to, uh, to do things in real time, uh, sign up for services that, that appeal to them when they need them, um, uh, in, uh, in, and, and be built for those immediately. So there's, there's an immediacy and a, um, and a, and a real-time thing here that, that wasn't present in, uh, in the earlier generations of policy. Uh, another key consideration that I'll talk about as well is, is scalability and performance. So as these use cases get more complex to support um, and, and more users are on the network, policy has to scale, uh, has to, scale to support the load in the network, but it also has to um, be able to uh, to perform at a level 
um, that that meets the requirements. These these increasingly um, uh, uh, increasingly difficult requirements in the network. So, from an operator perspective, uh, in terms of key requirements, there's a multifaceted approach I mentioned across the network, the subscriber, the service, and and IT as well. Um, we're focusing on enabling data service innovation, not just network capacity management. Uh, we need to meet requirements for high performance and, and massive scale. And when we look at operators who own uh, converged networks, uh, they own fixed networks, they own, they own mobile networks, we're looking at how policy needs to span multiple access technologies. And, and with that, support multiple types of enforcement points. So the next slide shows uh, MDOC's approach to policy. Um, policy is pervasive, bridging network and IT, and you can see here um, policy has uh, uh, is, is in the middle here uh, between some of the IT functions on the top and the network on the bottom. Um, the first uh, pillar that I would describe uh, in terms of our approach to policy, there's, there's four pillars here. The first one of these would be pervasive control. So, this is um, the ability to go deep into the network, work with multiple types of enforcement points, um, such as deep packet inspection, access gateways, optimization, uh, optimization solutions, um, and, and the ability to extend deeper in the network really gives operators the ability to support these different types of use cases, uh, particularly at the application level. So uh, is the user um, in the midst of a video session, is there congestion in the network? Um, is there an opportunity to optimize the subscriber's video stream? Those sorts of things are, are very important, and the, the level of control required in the network um, <clears throat> is, is, is more extensive and needs to be more extensive and, uh, uh, and sophisticated to be able to support the kind of use cases that, uh, that we see operators uh, needing to deploy to, to help them with this uh, service innovation challenge. So um, the second pillar that we'll talk about is, is, is data monetization. Um, data monetization is, is really at the top of every service provider's agenda in terms of realizing revenue from, from differentiated services. Um, and here the value of integrating policy and charging is clear. Customers want to consume data services in a simpler, more intuitive way across all of their devices, whether at home or while roaming. And at the same time, service providers need to develop revenue and pricing structures to increase ROI and create viable business models. So data monetization is key uh, and bringing together policy and, uh, and BSS or, or charging is, is, is a critical component of, of making that a reality. Network in intelligence is, is the third pillar. Um, there's a mine of extremely valuable information uh, and network intelligence that resides in the operational support systems in the OSS. Uh, these, these would include things like traffic patterns and congestion levels, um, and they would be historic, uh, historic data and near real-time data. And Amdocs has the ability to connect policy uh, with this network intelligence data and use that uh, in a predictive manner let's say for, uh, uh, for RAN congestion, and, uh, and make policy decisions in the network based on that, that network intelligence. Um, an example here is where a service provider could use the information that's in the OSS to determine available capacity in the network and trigger a proactive upsell uh, service to a subscriber such as a bandwidth boost. Um, but only where and when in the network there's, there's sufficient capacity available. So network intelligence is, is also a very key, um, a key component, a key pillar in the, in the Amdocs approach. The fourth pillar here is, is customer empowerment. So every operator realizes that uh, in the interest of reducing churn, um, it's, it's, it's critical to provide a... Uh, a superior customer experience and empower the customer to uh, to be able to do what they want when they want to in the network. Give them the ultimate flexibility and the ultimate in choice uh, in terms of um, uh, in terms of the value that that the service provider offers offers them. So uh, this is really the uh, you know the desired goal um, when customers are happy 
they're, they're spending money on services that they consider to be valuable, and this is this ultimately leads to, um, you know, helps operators address that that key monetization challenge. So the next slide shows how policy is really driving data plan innovation, and, and, and similar to our first generation to third generation policy example, we see um, a progression here from basic sort of uh, data plan innovation all the way to more sophisticated targeted innovation. And, and, and again, we'll go through some, uh, some more examples, some specific examples of the types of use cases that we're talking about here. But if you look at the basic, uh, the basic situation here, um, a, a service provider may decide that you know they've they've moved away from a, an all you can eat type data plan and they've they've implemented different uh, tiers, service tiers for the subscriber. So there may be a basic tier, uh, a mid level tier, and a uh, and a premium tier for their subscribers, and these are typically would typically be based on volume. So what policy does in uh, in these in these instances is it meters the amount of uh, data that a subscriber is using is attached to one of these particular plans. Uh, and then it implements controls when the subscriber reaches that volume limit. So this is this is very basic sort of tiered service. Um, and the types of controls that could be implemented would include uh, redirecting the subscriber to a, a captive portal where they could uh, upgrade their service or um, uh, you know, buy a day pass or, or do something to supplement their service. Or we could just say whenever the basic user hits uh, their, their monthly limit in terms of data usage, then we would uh, reduce their quality of service, send them a notification, uh, and, and advise them that, uh, um, that they've been now speeded to 512 kilobits per second for the, for the remainder of the month. Um, and another thing the policy obviously can do is block specific applications. So on a basic plan, you may not uh, allow your um, you know, may not want your users streaming video, uh, so you may be able to block specific video streaming applications. Um, and then we move on to more moderate types of innovation for policy where we've got this monthly volume limit as well. Um, but we may say we want to add unlimited use of specific applications. And I'm, I'm sure we've, we've, uh, we've all seen examples of this lately where uh, you have a specific monthly quota for your plan. Um, and you may have unlimited uh, social networking. So uh, you may be able to pick your five favorite sites for social networking. Uh, you may just get Facebook included, but that, that usage on Facebook, or in the other example here, the streaming video, uh, that usage um, would not be counted against your, uh, your overall one gigabyte monthly limit. So there's a lot of flexibility here and, and, and targeting that service providers can do in terms of um, you know the types of services that they think particular demographics are, are going to use and and target these types of plans at those demographics and uh, uh, and just add again a level of sophistication that that goes beyond that basic volume limit um, and then the final example here sort of takes that to uh, to another extreme where we add in uh, multiple devices for the subscriber and, and we know this is becoming very common as we see you know a single user with a smartphone. Uh, connected to the 3G network, uh, 3G dongle or 4G dongle on a, on a PC, and also a, uh, um, a 3G enabled uh, tablet. So lots of devices that we all have and lots of different ways that we need to connect. And so uh, what we're seeing is operators looking to share that data usage across these multiple devices, uh, simplify this for the user so there aren't multiple data plans uh, required. Um, and so that's something facilitated by policy in terms of being able to meter data in different buckets across different devices. And then we can add things here like uh, optimized video uh, where we, we have a, an optimization capability in the network and we can make use of that, use of that for, uh, for specific levels of, of su subscribers. Um, you can have unlimited ac access to certain favorite sites, similar to the previous example. And you could have uh, unlimited chat across uh, all sorts of different uh, chat applications like, um, uh, like Gtalk or MSN Messenger or whatever. So lots of different options here. And, and in each of these instances, policy is really a requirement to um, meter the data usage in different, um, different bundles, support quotas across 
uh, different devices and, and so on and so forth. So we'll look a little bit uh, at metering uh, as, a, as a key capability of policy. And in this example, we've got um, a happy subscriber here. Uh, we've got a metering engine as part of our policy solution. And what that metering engine allows us to do is to support uh, different data usage buckets. So I mentioned in the last example the social networking usage. Uh, so we could, we could meter uh, all social networking usage for a specific subscriber, and, and again, we could we could zero rate uh, that data usage for for Facebook, let's say, if we wanted to include that as part of um, as part of a, a more um, sophisticated or value based service plan. Um, we could also say we want to have a separate bucket, and you can see the the silver buckets here representing uh, data buckets. But we could have a separate bucket for web browsing usage. We could have a separate bucket for streaming video usage and general data usage. And, and we call this uh, multi-service metering or application-based metering where uh, we can look at different types, of, uh, different types of data that subscribers are using during a session and then apply specific controls or um, quotas on, on different types of usage or, or again, you know, not count uh, specific usage types towards a, a monthly quota. Um, so this is a, a key capability of policy that I wanted to highlight uh, in terms of being able to support innovative data plans uh, and, and really get to the, the dynamic nature of real-time service options that are required for these, these service innovation-oriented use cases. Um, I'd also add here that the types of metering uh, supported by policy include time-based metering, so you could have a, uh, a weekly data pass for a subscriber who's roaming, for example. Uh, they could be volume-based, um, and, and they typically are in, in the different categories or, or even on a macro level for a specific data plan. Um, and you could also combine uh, time and volume. So you could say, uh, you know, you have a, a monthly pass to use uh, a specific volume of data, two gigabytes of data, and, uh, and one of the, either the, the data has expired the data has been used up or the time period has expired, then uh, the data plan would be, would be finished. Um, we also have the ability to, to do um, metering on a session basis. So we can look at, at a subscriber's usage over the course of a session and let's say they've been uh, streaming video for, um, uh, for a specific period of time during a, during a period of congestion, then we can apply a control based on what they're doing within that individual session. So lots of options, uh, but the, the key message here is that um, the flexible metering really gives service providers the ability to, uh, to provide lots of choice in terms of how they want to support their, uh, their services in the network. Performance is also key, as I mentioned. Um, some examples here of why performance matters. So traffic growth, I think that's obvious. Uh, as we move to, to LTE, we're looking at driving six to eight times more volume usage um, given the, the additional uh, capacity in the network. Uh, we're seeing tons of uh, uptake of, of mobile video. Um, and this is, you know, it's well known that this is contributing to the capacity crunch and, and, and you know, we, upwards of two-thirds of, of, of traffic in the network, uh, I think, is, is attributable to, to video. And then we've also got multiple apps run, running simultaneously and, and, and uh, on, on an individual device. Device complexity is another, uh, another key contributor here in terms of, of performance. So more devices that are more sophisticated, um, able to use more data, uh, data-hungry smartphones and tablets. So, so device complexity and the, the, the addition of new devices all the time is having an impact here. And then the use case sophistication as well. So the kinds of use cases that I just described um, often result in, in longer hold times. Uh, there's more complex metering and control that needs to be done to support these types of use cases. And again, as I mentioned in the previous slide, there are multiple data buckets that, that need, to be, uh, need to be managed and, uh, and controlled. So all that, again, having an impact on the level of performance required from your, your policy system in the network. Um, and then we've also got the evolution, uh, technology evolution, as, as I mentioned. So uh, the ability to have more bearer types in LTE, more classes of QoS, uh, and so on and so forth. 
So let's, um, uh, let's take a look at some of the use cases, the popular use cases that we're seeing out there. Um, you know, some of these are, are more common than others, um, and, and, you know, some of them I would, I would describe as being sort of more disruptive or, or more uh, uh, futuristic. We are, we've seen, you know, numerous examples of some of them, others, others less so. Um, but I, I think some of the key ones here, and the, the ones I'm going to focus on uh, are our shared wallet and, and upsell in a little more detail in, in subsequent slides, but would also like to mention happy hour. Um, so this is where you, during a specific period of time, you can zero rate your subscribers' data so that it doesn't count towards their, uh, their monthly limit, and this could be during a, a period that's known to be less congested um, from a time of day perspective. Uh, than, than, than another period of the day. So, um, so we have this, this concept of happy hour. Roaming controls, uh, much of this has been driven by legislation out there in, in different markets. Uh, the EU springs to mind, but um, operators really need the ability to control their usage, their subscribers' usage, uh, to prevent bill shock, uh, to you know, keep their customers happy, and there's, there's all sorts of costs associated with, uh, with bill shock as well that, that have an impact on, uh, on the bottom line for operators. Uh, but roaming control is a very key um, key use case that that, that we're really uh, seeing a lot of out there in the market. Pre-purchase or data uh, data pass. This is the ability to buy uh, a sp specific amount of data for a specific period of time, um, giving flexibility either for subscribers who have a monthly plan and want to add to that plan, or for casual data users who uh, don't have a, an ongoing data plan and just want access to use data. Uh, Toll-free data, uh, where data is uh, is sponsored potentially by um, uh, by an OTT provider, um, um, where they, it, again it doesn't count towards the user's uh, monthly limit. Uh, OTT services, where there's a revenue share arrangement between the operator and a um, um, uh, and a, an OTT provider. Uh, there's a partnership there. There's a revenue share arrangement, and policy is a key component to facilitating that kind of thing. Uh, shared wallet we'll look at in more detail. Um, some of the ones along the bottom here, Volti, um, offload, RAN congestion, again, uh, some more relevant to, to the 4G network than, than the 3G network, but, uh, but all very much ones that we're seeing out there and, um, and that operators are expressing a lot of interest in, uh, in deploying. So let's have a look in a little more detail at the uh, shared wallet use case. So this is where um, data can be shared by a family uh, amongst family members or by a small enterprise uh, amongst different employees of the enterprise. Um, so it allows multiple subscribers and multiple devices to share one common data quota. Um, and, uh, and this is you know, something we're really seeing as more devices become available and, and people have multiple connected devices and, and uh, sort of divide it up amongst a family or a, or a small enterprise group. So the op opportunity for, for the operators here is really to offer differentiated service options. Um, this is something that can be, a di this type of plan can be a differentiator. There's a cost benefit to subscribers, but there's also a, a convenience benefit and a, and a control uh, benefit having having uh, control over their, their usage and so on. Um, something that can improve the uptake of new devices. If you think of a tablet, um, uh, an operator providing uh, a new tablet, they can make it more attractive to their subscribers by uh, making it simple to attach to a, a shared data plan um, so that, as I mentioned before, so that the subscribers can um, share the data across their, their multiple devices. And, uh, and it also, as, it, as I said, there's a cost component as well in, in keeping monthly, uh, monthly plans competitive. So along with the opportunity here come some challenges um, for operators just in terms of the mechanics of supporting this kind of plan. How do you attach multiple devices and users to one data plan? Uh, and how do you meter usage on multiple devices uh, across uh, different users and potentially across different networks, the 3G network, the 4G network, Wi-Fi, and so on. And then how do you provide tracking and notifications for self-management? So um, the policy control and, and the way Amdocs does policy control uh, allows you to attach multiple devices 
uh, to a single quota. And then it also lets you meter the multiple usage buckets simultaneously. And, and it also supports a, a notification capability so that the subscriber, for example, is notified when a, a specific plan member has reached their individual limit and then would give the ability for that plan uh, manager or the plan owner to go and allocate more data to uh, uh, to the subscriber who's run out, Alli allocate data from that, that common pool. So it allows a lot of flexibility from the subscriber perspective. Um, they have multiple devices. These can all be shared from a single wallet. And, uh, and there's choice. They can decide what is the best device uh, to use for a specific type of usage, whether they want to stream um, video on their tablet, uh, use HTTP or email on their smartphone, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and it gives them the ability to, to set these personal quotas by, uh, by device type using, um, using a client application. So here's a shared wallet example where we've got a monthly family data plan. Um, the family has been allocated four gigabytes of data for $60. Maria here uh, is the account owner. Um, she has the ability, she has the ultimate authority to be able to allocate that four gigabytes as, as she sees fit. Um, and, then, and then we've got different members of the family here. We've got the, the kids, Sophie and Sam, they have a 500 megabyte limit um, uh, that they can use on their smartphones and, smartphones. and we've got Joe, the spouse, who can use up to uh, uh, a gig and a half on, uh, on his PC and his, his smartphone. And then we can add things like bandwidth boost where... Um, Joe here gets two bandwidth boosts per month, uh, but only on his uh, only using his laptop. Um, and uh, ultimately, you know, when uh, when one of the kids, for example, goes over their 500 megabyte quota, then Maria could go into the client application and and uh, divert or reassign unused quota to uh, uh, to whoever's run out. And so it gives them really the flexibility to. Uh, um, to, to have a, a great deal of control over um, over how the data is used and, and by which users. So very valuable um, from a user experience point of view. Um, and, uh, and from an operator perspective, if we look at the next slide, um, there's really the ability to attract new subscribers and uh, segments. So this is the family segment and the small medium enterprise segment. Um, it gives them the ability to create chargeable options um, and new revenue sources, and and I think these sorts of plans ultimately help increase customer loyalty and uh, and reduce churn. And from the subscriber perspective, as I mentioned, there's there's a there's a benefit of of flexibility, uh, more choice, and and the ability to control their their usage um, in a you know depending on their personal requirements. So that's shared wallet. Let's take a look at uh, at upsell. Another key component, uh, another key use case here for um, for data monetization. And what this is 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 the ability to offer subscribers um, uh, different types of add-ons that they can purchase in real time. Um, so an example of this would be uh, find out what life is like at the next service tier, uh, and and you can support a try before you buy type promotion. Um, or you could prompt a user who's run out of uh, uh, run out of their used up their quota for a month to upgrade to the next service tier. So there's all sorts of things that you can uh, you can do here, and I've got some examples later that that describe some of these. But in terms of offering your subscribers real time upsell, um, and from the service provider's perspective, the opportunity is really to accelerate service uptake, uh, increase device adoption. You, know, you can you can have a a specific promotion associated with purchasing a new device. For example, you may get um, a specific amount of quota for free, um, two gig of quota, let's say, on a new iPad that doesn't count towards the subscriber's um, existing quota. Uh, those sorts of things. So there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of uh, different different ways of, of uh, generating new revenue and, and increasing ARPU. Um, and then there's a there's a competitive competitive edge here. So there's there's the ability to to respond to the competition, and uh, and and be more agile in terms of the types of services that that you can offer in response to what your competitors are doing out there.
So what are the challenges? So managing upsell uh, offers and base plans simultaneously for a single subscriber. So this is, um, you've got a, a base plan that you're managing, so you're, you're managing some quota, you're metering quota for the user, and then you need to add on top of that, let's say, uh, a promotional offer where there's uh, a different quota assigned. And, and, and the ability to do this, obviously, is, is through metering, and, and as I mentioned earlier and described, different buckets of usage. Uh, you need the ability to prioritize which usage gets metered first, um, and, and you can also do things like zero rating trial applications, so, um, so specific applications that you want your subscribers to trial, you can, you can offer those as, as zero rated options. Um, so what policy does is, is enables you to, to do the metering of multiple quotas at the same time, and then it also gives you the ability to um, have precedence rules for handling multiple quotas. Which, which quota should I deplete first before dipping into the next quota, those sorts of, those sorts of rules. Um, and it all um, all depends also on policy's ability to uh, base business rules and, and policy decisions on specific contextual factors. So what's going on in the network? Is there congestion? Uh, what's the subscriber's current data plan? What are their existing entitlements? Um, all those sorts of details come into play when, uh, when a policy decision is made uh, in, in the case of upsell. And from the subscriber's perspective, um, it uh, gives them lots of options. It's a richer mobile data experience. They're aware of their options. There's, there's greater transparency from that perspective. There's superior choice. Um, and, and they get to choose how they want to spend their dollars um, uh, to, to, you know, to give themselves the, the best possible data experience. So a bunch of different upsell examples here. Uh, a basic one would be a top-up when you reach your uh, your monthly quota. You have a one gig quota. You reach that quota, then the operator could could uh, send you uh, an upsell offer to top up your quota uh, between now and the end of the month at 500 megabytes or, or an additional gigabyte for a specific cost. Uh, QoS boost. We talked about that in an earlier example where um, uh, there's there's uh, a subscriber with very basic QoS who wants to, to watch a, a streaming video, uh, maybe it's associated with a specific event, they can, they can order a, a QoS boost. A roaming pass is a very good example as well. Uh, try before you buy, I mentioned. Um, and you may want to, and there's, there's obviously options for casual usage as well. So there's, there's the concept of, of data pass where, uh, where you get data usage for a specific period of time, or there's an example shown here where, you, where you're given social networking capability for a day. So you want to try out Facebook on your, on your mobile device. Uh, you can pay for that. It's time-based, um, and, uh, and you, get, you get the ability to see what that's, uh, what, what that's like before potentially committing to, uh, to, to, to purchasing that capability as part of your plan. So in terms of the benefits, uh, I think I've gone through quite a few of these. Um, from the subscriber experience perspective, it's, it's key. Compelling new offers uh, that keep me engaged, um, giving the ability to try new services where there's no risk or there's no impact on my plan. I can try it if I like it. I can, uh, I can make a, a longer term decision on whether I want to uh, commit to that capability long term. Um, and then from a business justification from the operator's perspective, um, when you do this, these things in real time, uh, you have the ability to reduce costs uh, in terms of uh, customer calls to customer service, call center calls, um, you know, regarding, regarding how things work on your plan and so on. You're, you're doing this in real time. You're doing it um, by a client or a captive portal, so there's, there's a lot less uh, um, um, involvement from, a, uh, from your customer, customer service organization. Um, you get the ability to accelerate service uptake with trial promotions, and I think ultimately, you know, through things like casual usage, uh, data pass type uh, type options for your subscribers, you have the ability to improve subscriber acquisition as well. So 
So those are uh, a couple a couple of use case examples. I, I mentioned uh, many others that we could talk about as well, but let's uh, let's summarize. Um, I think some of the key findings here of of the presentation today. Uh, it's clear that policy has become a, a core strategic element for service providers. Uh, it's a core component in the area of data monetization as the operators look to um, innovate with services and and really go beyond uh, go beyond those network control use cases that I mentioned that were sort of characteristic of first and second generation policy. Um, and with that in mind, we really see policy rapidly evolving beyond the network um, into IT, uh, into OSS and some of the different pillars that I, that I mentioned as, as part of our Amdocs approach to policy, um, where we need to take into account multiple different factors, uh, both in the network and outside of the network in terms of enforcement points, in terms of network capabilities, in terms of tying policy to IT. All these things are, are critical for, uh, for improving that uh, customer data experience and, uh, and being able to, to provide these, these innovative solutions. So that brings us to the end of uh, the formal presentation. Uh, if you have questions, please, uh, you can submit them now, as I mentioned, on the, uh, on the Q &A, in the Q&A window. Um, there's one question here that I can respond to, which is, uh, uh, can you talk a bit more about the role of the different enforcement points in the network? Um, sure, I think I did touch on this a bit. Um, there's different, a policy solution needs to be able to uh, work with different enfo enforcement points in the network, different types of enforcement points in the network, and also multiple uh, enforcement points uh, potentially across a single session. So um, when we're talking about these more sophisticated data monetization use cases, uh, you know, we're, we're really talking about the ability of an enforcement point to detect different types of traffic in the network. So when we talk about doing um, application-based metering, uh, metering on video usage or metering on HTTP or so on and so forth, we need some uh, sophisticated uh, uh, traffic detection capabilities in the network to be able to, to make policy decisions based on that information. So uh, one of the key ones here is uh, deep packet inspection. Um, so policy solution needs to be able to work with uh, deep packet inspection devices in the network. Uh, we're seeing a lot of standardization uh, in terms of the interfaces to uh, DPI in the network over the standard 3GPP interfaces. Um, and uh, and then we also have things like uh, video optimization solutions from from some of the different vendors out there offering these sorts of things. There's the ability to um, apply different optimization algorithms to uh, once the traffic has been detected in the network to apply different uh, algorithms to traffic to uh, um, uh, to um, really help that that traffic and reduce the impact of that traffic uh, through, through the network. So different types of enforcement points and, and critical, again, for supporting the, uh, uh, the types of use cases that we've been talking about here today. Uh, again, if you have questions, please, uh, you can submit them now. I do have one more here. Um, and this question is, can you talk a little bit, about, a little bit more about opportunities for uh, over the top, working with over the top providers. So, this is um, an area where we're seeing a lot more interest from operators. And of course, as as we all know, an enormous amount of the traffic that's that's going across the network is from uh, over the top uh, service providers. And I think the service uh, mobile service providers are really seeing that there's there's going to be a benefit to partnering with the OTT vendors. Um, you know, and the, the best example I can give you here is where policy is used to um, guarantee a, a specific quality of service level when a subscriber is using one of these OTT applications. So if you think of a Netflix or a, some other streaming video application, um, the operator could use policy to, uh, to guarantee uh, that when that traffic goes over the network, um, <clears throat> the subscriber would get a get a certain quality of experience, so a high quality video experience. And then the arrangement between the operator and the OTT provider would be to, um, to have some sort of a, a revenue share. So 
So thank you very much for your questions. Uh, I believe that's, that's, uh, that's all the questions we have for today, and I thank you very much for your time. Uh, if you have specific questions that you'd like me to follow up with after the webinar, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, my email address is here, and uh, would love to hear from you if, if you do have questions. So thank you very much for attending.